Well, hello there. Welcome to another episode of Tim's IT Straight Talk. This session is going to be called the Microsoft Technical Interview, Thinking on Your Feet with the STAR Method. I had this idea right before I fell asleep last night, and as I do habitually, when I have an idea that I, th I don't even judge it initially, it's basically if I have an idea, I'm writing it down. It's a core principle in getting things done, if you're interested. But, <clears throat> excuse me. No, I had this thought, you know, what if I used generative AI to serve as a Microsoft hiring manager or someone who's assigned my interview round? Let's say I'm applying for a position at Microsoft, which I've done. And I'm going to have the AI give me a question back that's pertinent to a job role. And then I'm going to apply what's called the STAR method, S-T-A-R, to answer the question. And here's the cool thing. I don't know what the question is. I, I put my prompt into chat GPT. In fact, let me share it with you right now. I'm not going to share my screen, but I'll just um, let me scroll back. I haven't looked at it. I sent the prompt in, but I didn't do anything else. Hang on. Okay, so my prompt is play the role of a Microsoft hiring manager who's giving me a technical interview for the following position. And I went to jobs.microsoft.com and I found a position just... Not exactly pseudo-randomly, but Senior Developer Advocate for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Copilot, which is legit, looks like an awesome job. So I'm going to role play as the candidate. <clears throat> and I paste it in. I said, play the role of a Microsoft hiring manager. Make your questions realistic and open-ended because I'll use the STAR technique to answer. Here is the job description. And I just copied and pasted the text into the prompt. So here we go. Let me scroll down to where the completion starts, because I haven't seen this question yet either, and that's the point. I'm going to apply something that Microsoft HR people will recommend if you're selected. If you get past your initial application screening at Microsoft, and the hiring manager wants to put you through an interview round, it'll be a, a multi-hour situation. And the, AI, the Microsoft HR people are fantastic for helping you prep. I've never in my entire career of 26 years had a human resources department treat me as well as the Microsoft one had and still does to this day. Anyway, STAR is S-T-A-R. S is situation. T is task. A is actions. And R is results. So it's a methodical way to approach problem solving. And the wrinkle here is, no matter how well you prepare, the chances are very good that you're going to be asked questions that you don't have a canned response for. So it's nice to have the STAR method as a framework. And then comes in, well, it, it comes down to two things, your core competencies, and then just as important, your ability to articulate and verbalize those core competencies. So there's some storytelling going on. Yikes, kind of intimidating. Well, let's see what ChatGPT said. There's a bunch of preamble because it's role playing as the tech interview. One of the key responsibilities, okay, here we go. Here's your question. I'm going to read it aloud. Reflecting on your past experiences, could you describe a situation where you successfully led a project that involved creating technical content for a large developer community? Specifically, how did you ensure that the content was engaging, educational, distributed? So it goes on. It's a pretty complicated question. Now, let's imagine you got that question or a question that would be in your domain. I chose this job role specifically because it's exactly in the work I do professionally. You would be your own domain. But the idea is the same. If you're like me, your first instinct is to freeze. And you know what I do? I observe it, that I'm freezing, and I pause. I'm not afraid of silence. That's something great with technical interviews. If you can be friends with silence and not feel the urge to fill in gaps of time, not a good look in my opinion. Silence, reflection, feeling that initial hit like, yikes, I'm not ready for this question. And then breathe that out, and then it's like, yes, I am ready, and here we go. I'm going to answer it. So i am I'm got no problem asking for clarification, or if it's a long multi-part question, I'll say, could we just tackle it a segment at a time? Don't be afraid to do that with the people at Microsoft who interview you. 
they're human beings. And not only are they human beings, they're exceptional human beings. And they wouldn't be in that role if they weren't qualified, you see. So um, can I describe a situation where I successfully led a project creating technical content for a Oh, well, sure. How about we talk about what I do now? Let me, do the, let me pretend I, I slipped out of my role as the candidate. <laughs> okay, here's my response off the top of my head. <clears throat> yes, if you, wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind if I paused for just a second, because I do have quite a few examples. I want to quickly pare down to one representative. Okay. Yeah, one example that comes to mind, the situation was in my full-time employment at Pluralsight. I had been watching the news quite a bit and saw an uptick of generative AI. This is going back in time a little bit. But more particularly in the Microsoft Power Platform ecosystem, I saw that the Power Virtual Agent system, the Power Virtual Agent service is transitioning to the Copilot Studio ecosystem. And I thought that was a really great opportunity to supplement Microsoft's own documentation with my own value. So at Pluralsight, I worked with my editor to create an e-learning course aimed at developers. Well, strictly speaking, it wasn't entirely developers because uh, the Power Platform is intended, as you probably know, for the citizen developer, not necessarily the full-time programmer. But I undertook this course with developers definitely in mind and made sure from design to delivery to post-production release and maintenance that I was scoping the training to be just as valid and helpful for a developer as a non-developer. And, and that subject, Copilot Studio, was a good one also because of its broad applicability. And I can definitely, I've been there myself where I've considered studying a course and I thought, is this really for me because I want something that really speaks to what I do? That's one of my challenges, but also one of my gifts as an instructor, actually. Can. So how did I do? I'm not real. I don't have really great... <laughs> I, I feel I'm being really self-critical, understand. And I understand that I'm likely to be much more critical than another person would. But I'm immediately th editing, thinking that I started off kind of clumsily and blah, blah, blah. And then when I latched onto Copilot Studio, I really I had to think really quickly. Now I'm not making anything up. Every syllable that comes out of my mouth is the truth. And of course, that's going to be your experience too when you interview. But it's a question of trying to align everything very quickly. And you know what's beautiful about that? All of the above is taken to account by a good interviewer. Now, not everybody at Microsoft is going to be the best interviewer because the truth of the matter is sometimes when things get busy, you might get asked to do an interview round with a candidate and you may not be feeling well that day, you're not into it, the candidate might be a little bit too far outside of your skill set. Stuff happens, but it's all part of the picture. In other words, if I'm interviewing somebody and they responded the way I did, I would be taking into account all of this stuff, May, I guess because I'm an empathic person despite my autism. So how did I do as far as the STAR method goes? I explained the situation, and basically it was I designed, I brought up, I pitched, I designed, I created and published a course end-to-end -end on a subject matter that I knew would be helpful to developers but also non-developers. So that really is the situation, and the task was the work I undertook. Well, actually, I'm messing it up. Hang on a second. S is explain the situation. Oh, I guess I didn't do that. Yikes. Hmm. Retrospect, or what's that saying? Hindsight is twenty twenty. Interesting, yeah. Probably, if I had to do that over again, if I were to do that response over again, would have probably breathed a couple more times because, you know, to be honest, I'm split between you, this recording, and then the subject. It's not like interview where you're 100% micro-lasering in on the subject and the, the person that you're discussing with. But, yeah, I, I could have just said in general. I, I guess I did say this is one of many examples. It's representative, and it comes from my current job at Pluralsight. That's fine. 
So you, I described the task and the action, and what was the result or the outcome? Ugh, I missed that one too. This is actually very instructive for me. I hope this video is instructive for you, but I want you to know it's just as instructive for me. I need to remember this stuff each day myself. Yeah, positive outcomes of the course. Well, the course is well received. That always feels good as an instructor. As far as my full-time employment, it's another notch to put on my achievement belt when it comes time to personnel reviews and performance reviews and that kind of stuff. Most importantly, there are some developers and non-developers walking around this green earth who have some more skills in artificial intelligence than they did before they watched my course. So there you have it. Thinking on your feet. Now, in wrapping up and sending you on your way, I want to say a couple more things about thinking on your feet. Extemporaneous is the, the fancy term. It's, for me, it's one of those things that can only come through bitter experience and practice. And how do you get the bitter experience and practice is the key. What made me a professional public speaker was doing it enough to realize that I have a gift and I committed to honing and sharpening that gift. Not everybody is a talented or articulate public speaker or effective or, or. Knowing that, Know thyself. I think Socrates said that. Knowing that about yourself is great news because now you can rule that out, at least for now, and focus on other aspects that you are more skilled and gifted at. Yeah, there's no substitute for just trying. I was going to say trying and failing and trying and failing, but that still sounds kind of generic. I'm going to leave you, because I am a genuine child of the 80s, with the words of Master Yoda. Do or do not, there is no try. <laughs>